Well hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In the last video um, you'll remember that the, um, the I thought I got to the bottom of um, servicing the Dream and, and, and took it out for a test ride and it was all running really well um, but then I noticed that I got complete electrical failure uh, even though the bike itself was still running so uh, I put it back on the on the lift table um, I have now found out why the main fuse um, kept blowing um, as soon as I put it in and turned the ignition on but um, I thought it might be useful just to go through the fault finding steps that I took to find out where the problem was um, give you an indication of how long it took me um, and a couple of um, hints and tips when it comes to trying to find these sorts of elusive short circuit faults. So I'm simulating what the fault looked like um, on this bike and basically the fault was when you turn the ignition on you've got no instrumentation whatsoever no instrumentation lights there are no um, lights working there are no indicators working um, horn doesn't function uh, brake light um, doesn't work absolutely completely it's been a 1970s bike um, the electrics aren't particularly sophisticated um, it's effectively a battery around the other side. Um, we've got a regulator, rectifier, rectifier regulator here, which takes the um, voltage um, from the um, stator and rotor, oh, the stator and rotor generates, converts it into DC and the correct voltage, um, and then feeds it to the rest of the bike. So we've got our we a CDI box here for the coil. Um, we've got our various connectors and bits and pieces here. Fuse board here. I say fuse board is only three fuses, two five amps, and the top one, which is the one that's causing the problem, that's the um, 15 amp one that every time I turn the ignition on, that just blows. Um, we've got a load of connectors in the headlight, uh, as is typical of this age bike. Um, headlight's now back on, uh, so I have. I have found the fault with this bike which we'll uh, go through later on um, and, but basically there's our battery and then we've got a, um, a, a starter solenoid here for the for the starter motor and that's pretty much it um, to be perfectly honest. So how do you fault find something that's got a dead short circuit on it and it blows, blows the fuse every time you um, turn the ignition on? Well you could go and buy yourself a bunch of new fuses and um, put them in one at a time, isolate a particular wire or circuit, pull a connector out, switch the ignition on and hope that it doesn't blow the fuse. Um, you're going to need a lot of packets of fuses to do that so get rid of those and instead get yourself a 21 or 23 watt uh, indicator bulb. Uh, these were pretty standard in this age of bikes this is a 21 watt one and what I've done here is I've just soldered uh, a wire onto the end of this and this is going to provide our aid to fault finding a short circuit on this bike so you take your bulb connect it to your wires and you're going to um, connect this bulb across the holder for the mains fuse that keeps blowing like so okay so all we've got now is that bulb directly wired across um, that main fuse holder so the bulb acts as a resistor um, and the filament inside the bulb will glow when there is current flowing um, between the two uh, parts of the fuse connector. So that will give us an indication as to whether or not we've got any kind of short circuit. So at the moment, if I turn the ignition on, you can see all the lights and everything have come on, and the bulb is not glowing at all. There's no there's, there's no light there from that bulb whatsoever. So what that's telling me is that there's no flow of current between these two points here where the fuse would normally be. 
Um, what I had before I started fault finding this was um, as soon as I switched that ignition on, that bowl was as bright as it could possibly get. And if it had been the fuse in there instead, it would have just blown the fuse. Um, so basically, when you've got a short circuit, if you do, if you attach a bulb across the, the main fuse like that, this bulb will light up and it will be bright. Okay. And then the next step is to go around to each of these connectors. Um, and disconnect them and watch what the bulb is doing um, and hopefully eventually you'll get to the stage where you'll pull a connector off and it could be anywhere it could be something like in one of these which go um, to the rear indicators it could be uh, this connector which goes up to the uh, rectifier it could be connectors up here, which are on the, um, what effect is a CDI unit <clears throat> for the timing. <clears throat> um, it could be any of those. Um, also, of course, um, in the last video, you've seen I had the headlight off. There's four or five connectors and various cables in there. You have to take all of those off. There'll be connectors for things like the switch gear, the horn, um, the the lighting uh, on this handlebar all of those one by one have to be disconnected and as you disconnect each one you check the bulb and see if it's gone out or it's gone dim um, because when your ignition is switched on if there's no fault at least on a bike of this age um, when that's switched on and there's no fault there should be no current or very little current at all flowing through that fuse and this is the way to test it or this is the trick to use to test it so you've got your fault you've got a dead short circuit somewhere you've put your ignition on that bulb is lit and it's bright again then you start looking around the other side of the bike <clears throat> um, you've got in this case you've got a cable from the connector from the coil disconnect that take your coil off um, and then we come down here and we've got the starter uh, switch down here. Disconnect that. Then there's a load of cables under this boot here, which go to things like your uh, oil pressure switch, neutral light switch. And in my case, I had disconnected. I, I, I was working on this for the best part of, I don't know, six or eight hours, something like that. Um, and that bulb stayed on the whole time i could not get that bulb to go off so there was a dead short somewhere so i was then at the point thinking wow this is um a lot more serious than i thought um and i'm gonna have to start um stripping the loom off the bike um i did spend a bit of time just waggling all the wires around trying to work out whether maybe there's just been some chafing somewhere and something was shorting out against the frame but I, I couldn't find anything at all. Um, and then I was putting all the um, headlight assembly all back together. And as I was moving things around, I suddenly saw a spark um, from basically down in here. So the bottom of the... Um, uh, of, of the frame um bottom of the uh, yoke if you like and then i suddenly remembered that when i first got this bike the horn was located in the wrong place um, or rather more to the point this bracket here was facing the other way and the horn was sort of down here and it was at a sort of jaunty angle um, it just didn't look right so um i put the horn back to where it was supposed to be. Um, went off on my merry way, the bike was fine, no issues whatsoever. Been riding it around for, you know, um, I don't know, a couple of hundred miles, something like that, and it was fine. Then obviously I did all this work on it to, to do the servicing and fix the oil leak with the, um, on the on the clutch lever, uh, actuator lever on the other side. 
put it all back together, went out for the test ride. Again, everything fine. And then suddenly this issue came up. And this is where you start going round and round and round in circles because my initial thought was it has to have been something that I've done while I was doing the service. I was thinking, what have I done? I've taken the coils off. Um, so I've put the coil back on. Um, I've uh, disturbed some of the wiring. So I checked all of that. I checked this connector in particular because um, I had that off. I thought, well, have I disturbed something down here? You know, with these cables coming down um, for the pressure switch and the, and the neutral light switch, etc. Couldn't see anything wrong at all. Um, so then started thinking, well, okay, the next, uh, the next uh, rabbit hole I went down, if you like, was to think, well, okay, maybe there is a short in one of these cables. I mean, that if there is literally a short inside one of these looms, then, you know, you really are struggling at that point um, to find anything. Um, and so I think it was almost, not luck as such, but um, because I'd exhausted pretty much every other possibility at that point, um, and then I saw this spark suddenly appear down there. So I grabbed hold of the horn, um, and I just flexed it out a bit, and lo and behold, the bulb went out. So I knew immediately I'd found where the problem was. So what had happened, uh, I don't know if I can show you this, very easily i'm not sure you're going to be able to see it but basically um on the bottom of the horn yeah you can just about see it there if i zoom in i think you've got two connectors with little plastic boots on them and when i'd reposition the horn to where it should go um one of these connectors was actually resting on the bottom of or actually resting on the steering lock i think it was um, at the bottom of this, um, uh, at the bottom of the frame. Um, and over a period of time, the vibration had just uh, loosened one of these boots, one of these little plastic boots, and it had come down, allowing the metal contact to touch the frame, which was creating the short. So obviously what I've now done is I've bent the horn bracket back out, I've put the boot back on, made sure there's enough of a gap that it's not going to contact it again. Um, but yeah, that that was the fault. So six, eight hours of grief, um, all because of that. And I suppose you could argue my fault because I should have checked that in the first place. Um, but you know, you live and learn. But yeah, the the point of this video really is um, not to go into in depth with the fault finding as such, but really just to show you this trick of putting the bulb um, across the main fuse. And then switching the ignition on because if that's if you're blowing your fuse at that point it's then really difficult to find out where the fault is so you need some other kind of indication and this is a really good fault finding aid from that point of view so just to prove that does work if i switch the ignition on okay so the bulb is obviously not um, not lit up at all um, if i put the side light on that bulb now glows quite dimly so that that means that there is current now flowing across that main fuse which is exactly what you would expect at that point in time because there is current being drawn by the by the light uh, by the um, side light turn the side light off it goes off if I activate the horn while I'm activating the horn you can see the light coming on and off so um, if that light was, and I keep saying this, but I'll reiterate it once more, to, one more time. If that light is really, really bright, there's a very good chance you've got a dead short somewhere, and you just go round, pull off all your connectors, um, headlight connectors, everything, and eventually <clears throat> you should get to the stage where you found the short and the light bulb goes off, and you can rectify the problem, and then happy days. Okay, so I hope you've liked this short video. Um, if you have, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and I will see you in the next one.